proper care and maintenance of your tomato plants are necessary for you to be able to get a great harvest of tomatoes throughout the season. Let's cover the top 10 care and maintenance topics that will help ensure you get a great harvest of your tomatoes throughout the season. Hey guys, it's Daryl with Luzan Sip Living. Thanks for joining me back out in my garden today. Now we've had rain and pretty severe weather for the past four or five days. Today's first day that I've actually uh, been able to spend some time out in the, in the garden. Um, the sun's out a little bit, it's still kind of overcast, but it's nice to be back out in the backyard with the sun out. Tomatoes are in fact the most popular uh, crop in our home gardens in the U.S. Although they can be quite temperamental, the good news is with proper care and maintenance of our, our tomato plants, they can and will thrive to provide a great uh, harvest of juicy, tasty, uh, organic tomatoes. We're going to cover 10 key topics uh, in your care and maintenance of the tomato plants to ensure you do have a good robust harvest uh, throughout the season. All right, go ahead and subscribe, ring the notification bell, like the video. Hey, please go ahead and share the video too. I'm sure there's somebody you know who may uh, be able to get some value out of the, this tomato care and maintenance video. Before we talk about the 10 key care and maintenance topics, I do want to give a brief explanation of determinate versus indeterminate types of tomatoes. So a determinate tomato, that's basically um, sometimes referred to as a bush or bushy tomato. Um, generally doesn't grow higher than two or three foot tall. Um, generally the fruit all becomes ready to harvest or ripe about at the same time. So with, with all the tomatoes coming ripe kind of at the same time, for people who like to can tomatoes, which I do. This is ideal because you get a lot of tomatoes at one time that you can go ahead and, and do what you're going to do and then can it. Pruning is not recommended for the determinate type. So indeterminate tomatoes, um, sometimes referred to as vining tomatoes, they tend to grow throughout the season uh, all the way through to the first frost. Because they grow, they got to be supported. So whether you use a tomato cage, a wooden stake, whatever the case may be, you got to make sure you have them supported. And I grow, what, 52 tomato plants. I think Martino's Roma is the only determinate ones that I, that I grow. All the rest are indeterminate. All right, one of the most important things that you can do to support your tomato plants, and heck, any, any, tomato, any plants in your garden, is of course to inspect them. You wanna look up and down, all over. Let's take a look at this one. I gotta get some more cages or do something here. Um, but you basically just want to inspect it. You want to look underneath the leaves. Okay, so we want to look for any pests. You want to look and see, do you need to prune anything? But you just want to go in and look. See, I got something eating this tomato right here. It's kind of gotten this now. I don't know, we've had rain for five, six days straight, so I hadn't been able to get out here really to even look. So we'll want to take a look. Uh, I don't see what it is. What we may want to do is go ahead and spray uh, spray a little neem oil on it, maybe a little BT. And there's no doubt tomato plants um, can be very productive, but they do require vigilant care. Your very first tool and something that you can do daily should be to inspect your plants. R recognizing that if caught early, the damage can usually be avoided or greatly reduced. So you got to be out checking your plants on a daily basis all right so number two for care and maintenance of your tomato plants is to mulch uh, it's critical that you go ahead and mulch i use a leaf mulch which has some pine straw in it and it gets uh basically all chipped up all cut up small pieces i use that as my mulch and mulching as i've talked about in some other videos provides a number of benefits including it holds the moisture in, in the ground holds the moisture in the raised bed so it doesn't dry out as fast and, and probably most critically for tomato tomatoes are real prone to soil or soil borne um, disease and what the mulch does is when the water when rain hits it or say you're using a hose and you spray it it, it prevents the soil per se to bounce up with with some fungal spores that may be in it it does a better job of just kind of keep protecting the health of your of your plant and not having the soil or our soil borne disease um, splash up onto the bottom leaves 
so in short mulching is critical for your tomato plants health um, I need to do some additional mulching myself all right the next thing we want to look at is you don't want these leaves branches slash leaves to be close in close proximity to the ground all right so what you want to do is you want to make sure you don't have any branches or leaves touching the ground so I'll come in and cut them out up to about 12 inches um, to where there's 12 inches between the, the lowest branch and the ground or the mulch. All right, so what I'll do is I'll actually come in here. Look, we don't need that guy right here. Okay, let me just take it off. This one as well. And use a sharp um, trimmer. So again, we're just taking off these bottom branches. These are ones that are going to get that are going to get a, a bigger a bigger opportunity or have a, has a bigger opportunity to get a fungal infection. Okay. And so, look, we trim them off. It puts it allows it to put more energy going up vertically than it will be these branches down here at the bottom. Again, you have less chance of soil borne issues. And again, over here, I'm just going to trim the ones that are close to the base. And you want to use a sharp tool just so you make sure you're not leaving an opening. Now, these suckers had grown pretty big. I don't mean for that to happen for sure. All right, so this one looks a lot better though. Just trimmed up good, good healthy plant. Yeah, what's important with those branches that are lower, um, they're the, you know those typically are the oldest branches because they're the ones who you know initially developed, um, and they're usually the first ones to develop fungal disease. Um, they are more susceptible to soil borne issues since they are closer to the ground. And right here in the crotch, right in the very angle here of the main stem and a branch that comes off. Okay, this is called a sucker. Now, what we don't want is our plants to get bushy, so we pinch it off. So, basically that's all I did. I just, just pinched it off. Let's do this one down here. This one had gotten fairly big. But again, we're just gonna pinch it off. That's all you gotta do. Pinch this one off. And this one here. Let me see if we can see it from up here. Pinch this one off. All right, still got one more here. So again, in the crotch right there, as you can see, there's a sucker, that's what they call it. But he's about to be no longer, so I just pinched him off. And again, those branches make you uh, make your plant more bushy. The problem with that is it kind of prevents uh, good airflow, which you don't want your plants overly wet all the time. You want that airflow uh, to be going through, keeping it dry. Uh, you know the actual plant you don't want it overly wet and for sunlight to penetrate down through the flowers that kind of thing too if it's too bushy it won't happen and it also takes away some energy from your plant to grow if you're trying to grow these new suckers I'd rather focus my energy on vertical growth and fruiting but let's take a look at this one here that's important you understand okay this is a sucker here This is not where these flowers came out. You see where these flowers come off? It's not really in the crotch. It's up away from the crotch a little bit or the angle, the elbow there. Those you don't want to, to uh, tear, tear off or prune off. So like this one, we'll pinch this one off here. Okay. So for, for the best harvest you can get, keeping your plants healthy is to go ahead and pinch off those suckers. Oftentimes, you know, I'm trying to get maximum growth initially. I want it to go vertical, grow up, 
not out per se. This initial growth, if you got a bunch of blossoms and they're turning into fruit, it's going to basically um, take away some of the energy from your plant. So oftentimes, see I got two sets of leaves here. Um, excuse me, I got two sets of flowers. This one's coming in up here. These down here have already come out. So what I'm gonna actually do, I want the energy to focus a little bit more to allow it to go vertical. So I'm gonna actually go in and just, just snip this off. And yes, I'm gonna lose a few uh, tomatoes, but I'm gonna end up getting a bigger, healthier plant and I'll, I'll get caught up. And there's actually some more flowers coming in here. So um, it's optional, you don't have to do it. If you're just looking so far to getting those first uh, tomatoes out, leave, leave them on there. Now, most of my tomatoes here, I've talked about earlier, are the indeterminate kind, which are the more vining, as they're called. So they'll grow, they'll actually grow above this tomato cage in many cases, and they'll actually fall over. Depends upon the species or, you know, type. But um, what's most important about that is they have to be supported. So in this case, I'm using these kind of heavier duty uh, or taller tomato cages. They work pretty well. They, they, um, they're they somewhat uh, cheap from a quality standpoint. Every now and then these little welds will, will crack off. Um, but they're not cheap when you buy them. So they're fairly expensive. I don't even remember the cost. And that's why I just don't have a whole bunch. I mean, I still need a bunch more, but I just don't feel like going and spending a whole bunch of money on it. So I'll probably use steaks for the rest of my tomatoes and peppers. Which I still need to get some of those. The only good thing with tomato cages too is they do fit within each other so I can kind of stack them all to in one particular area when I'm not using them. Now this is just an example of one that I went ahead and just put a steak in. Um, you got to use something reasonably soft that isn't going to dig into the stem. This is one thing that I've used in the past and this is just a velcro. It's got a soft inner, inner part change it around just a little bit so I can hold it a little bit more vertical okay I'm gonna go ahead and remove that one to reposition it and it's no longer touching the ground so I'm happy with that and there are other methods or other tools you can use to support your tomatoes especially your, your indeterminate tomatoes which you really need to do there's plastic or different kinds of round fasteners that you can put around your main stem and then around your steak um, another one I wanted to try and haven't done that yet is you can get like five foot high concrete remesh and it's in a six by six inch mesh um, that looks like it works really well you basically just form a cylinder uh, up from it. Um, the only problem I got with that, at least with these tomato cages, I can stack them with uh, with those concrete earring mesh. I'm just not sure how I would be able to store them when I'm not using them. Um, they seem to be they appear pretty bulky. If anybody has any ideas there, I'd love to hear. Um, you know, what are some of the other ways you support your tomatoes? And if you have any, if you've used those concrete remesh kind, and uh, what would you recommend around that? Number seven topic when you're thinking about how to get the best harvest of your tomatoes. Look, tomatoes got to be watered regularly. Not too much, not too little, just like most of your plants. Um, but the consequences of not watering your tomatoes regularly typically ends up in tomatoes that just don't develop right. They get blossom rot possibly. They crack or split open. Um, those kind of things you want to avoid, obviously. So what I do in my garden, and not everybody can do this, but I got some water lines that come up inside my raised beds. And I've got these soaker hoses here um, hooked up. So I can pretty much be assured. So I can be assured that I'm going to water my plants daily. And a fairly deep watering, I can set it for how many minutes I want it to do. You want to have two to four inches like of, of water at least weekly for your plants and you also want to deep water um, deep water them 
what that means if I get a hose and I just spray the very top for two minutes the water's not even if the, if the ground's dry the soil's dry the water's just not going to soak down far in the bed um, so what you want to do is make sure you keep some water on it soaker hoses work great to do that um, to allow the water to go down deep and what it is the tomatoes and other plants the roots are going to go deeper so they're going to be stronger roots better roots and overall better plant so deep watering is the way to go in my automated watering system it runs i think 6 30 a.m i think that's what it said at 6 or 6 30. Um, that's the optimum or preferred time that you want to water your tomato plants so number eight on the list is to go ahead and give your tomato plants a little boost a nutrient boost uh, every three to four weeks so what i do is i use an organic fish and kelp uh, concentrated fertilizer liquid fertilizer all right so let's go ahead and, and put a little bit of organic fertilizer on our tomatoes this is one brand that I use, um, GS Plant Foods. During, during COVID, they had a problem kind of keeping up the inventory. It's probably a pretty small business. I've used Neptune, similar kind of uh, fish and kelp. Um, but this is some really, really good organic fertilizer. It stinks, smells like fish. Um, but after a little while, it'll go away. But the plants really love it. You can, you can really give it a boost to your plants, and that's what I like to use. One, two, three. Alright, it's time to go ahead and go uh, fertilize some tomatoes. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and fertilize these. Again, this is an organic fish and kelp fertilizer. You know, it looks pretty nasty, it foams up, it has a little bit of a brownish color, and it honestly stinks like fish. That's okay because it works. It doesn't last for forever. I got a hole in my water can. That's okay too. So just add a little bit of the organic fertilizer to each of the tomatoes. Gotta give it a little boost. Yeah, and that's how I usually apply organic fertilizer to my uh, plants, my tomato plants especially. Now, compost tea is another great organic way to go ahead and, and uh, fertilize your tomato plants. I'll do a video coming up on uh, compost tea. I haven't ever made any. I want to try that, see how it does. Yeah, so do not use a fertilizer that's high nitrogen content. The nitrogen basically makes your plants very bushy, green. Um, it wants to grow, but it won't fruit as much so. Just avoid a high nitrogen fertilizer as well. And in my opinion, avoid a commercial synthetic fertilizer. Use something organic, um, that's safe for you. You may not know it, but tomatoes are self-pollinating. What does that mean? That means it has male and female parts within the same flower. So the, it, it basically poll, pollinates itself. So the pollen basically falls down deep into the flower, which then pollinates the flower. It doesn't mean that bees and other pollinators, as well as wind, doesn't help that process happen, the pollination process happen. All right, so what I want to show you is one other way that you can help ensure that your tomato flowers or your tomato plants, you know, set fruit. So these are not hardly big enough right now, but these are, these are the individual flowers, right? And so there's pollen, and they haven't opened up completely yet. They'll have the pollen, and then they have the male and female parts inside, so... They self-pollinate, so the pollen will shake down into the internal, you know, portion of the flower, and that's what pollinates it. But one thing you can do also is you basically, what I say, what I call pluck. But if you had, these will be bigger in a little while, but if you just do that, you pluck it just with one finger, and you just kind of do that to each, each little blossom. And all that does is just basically stir up the pollen. It just ensures that each flower gets pollinated. Just a tip. Now as you do your daily inspection, obviously check your tomatoes if they're near ripe or they're ripe. 
go ahead and, and, and pick them. And that just helps, like in any plant, if you got a ripe fruit, that helps encourage it to, um, to go ahead and produce more fruit. And then pinching off the tips of your indeterminate tomatoes, of your main stem toward the end of the end of the summer, it basically it creates a trigger process whereby it basically tells the tomato that man, I, you know, the fall's coming. I need to go ahead and, and produce whatever tomatoes I can now, so it'll make it flower and, and try to produce fruit as fast as possible at that point. It's just another tip toward the end of the summer to kind of push things along before the uh, first frost comes along. Topic number 10. This is one of the most aggravating ones. So look, we go and we use the right soil. We use Mel Bartholomew's soil mix. Um, we do everything right. We got our raised beds. You got rows, whatever you got. The soil's right, the seed's right, the plant's growing. It's jumping up. Get some rain and it really jumps up. And then what happens? You got some pests come in um, and they just, just decimate your, your, your uh, tomatoes. It doesn't have to happen. That's why we want to do a daily inspection, check for, for, for the bad, bad bugs, the bad insects. And if you find some, don't freak out. You ain't got to put seven dust and kill everything in sight. There are organic ways we can deal with the bad bugs and without killing the bees, without killing the other pollinators. Um, and that's what we want to do. That's what we do in my backyard garden. All right, so when you're looking through your garden, you may find some of these, I mean, these really big tomato hornworms. There's a big fat, well, I don't know, big fat caterpillar with a little horn on top, single horn on top of his head, and they just devour the, the tomato leaves. Um, but you can find them; they're green. They they fit in. But if you go and look daily, you can see it, and you can see where the leaves are being eaten. Um, just grab them. They got little suckers, but pick them off. Put them in a little bowl of soapy water; it'll kill them. Um, or you can dispose of them in some other less than friendly method which is what I prefer. I don't like when bugs get into my plants. It really aggravates me. So I like to do something about it. But the only, the only way you can keep from having too bad a damage is to inspect it daily, find the damage before it gets to be a bad problem. And you've heard me talk about being organic. From an organic perspective, I try to use neem oil and BT. I have videos, I'll put a link down below, but. You can look at my channel. I got videos on how to stay organic in your backyard, organic raised bed garden. Um, neem oil and BT. BT works. Uh, it works to kill your um, hornworms, your caterpillars, soft body type insects. It's a natural bacteria. It's organic. It's not going to hurt you. And it also doesn't hurt your beneficial insects. Now on the flip side, you got neem oil. What I don't use BT on, those caterpillars and soft side insects, I use neem oil, and that is pretty effective. It's not like seven dust, it ain't gonna kill everything in sight, um, but it's very effective to control the bad bugs, the bad insects that may be in your, uh, in your garden. Again, you can use seven dust, you can use any of these other commercial pesticides, and they do work. Um, again, I, I just prefer to stay organic. I prefer not to kill the pollinators because I need the pollinators in my garden, just like you do, to pollinate your flowers, um, to pollinate your vegetable flowers so that you can produce fruit. Tomatoes are self-pollinating, but a lot of your other ones are not. Um, if you kill all the bees, you kill all the pollinators, what you got? You're you gonna have a hard time getting fruit, getting vegetables to show up on, on your, on your uh, plants. Thanks for joining me at Louisiana Simple Living again today. We can be very successful at growing tomatoes, but there are a few key things that we have to do. And again, you can harvest a ton of tomatoes that are just incredibly, that blow anything away from the supermarket or grocery store uh, with just some simple care and maintenance. And I've reviewed those 10 key um, care and maintenance items here in this video. Now I've kind of touched on the surface of some of these topics, so Feel free to look back at some of my previous videos. I cover some of these things a lot in a lot more detail. So if you got any questions, just let me know. Um, put it in the comments down below and I'll give you a response. And hey, look, if you hadn't subscribed as yet, please subscribe, ring the notification bell and like that video. And feel free to share the video. I'm sure there's a lot of other people that you know that may get some value out of this uh, video on tomato care and maintenance. Just as a reminder, 
make memories now rather than later. And as always, I'll see you on the next video.